Banger. 1. The playful and friend exchange of teasing remarks. There was much good-natured banger. 2. Exchange remarks in a good-humored teasing way. The men bangered with the waitresses. 3. Often used to excuse inappropriate jokes about sex with a friend's mother, or to disguise sexual harassment in the workplace. Don't be so uptight about it, Deb, it is just banger. Or get your fucking rat out for the lads, Sally. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vince, also known as Peasant Kenobi on the internet. And I'm here to bring you the latest sweaty fever dream from my most lucid and darkest of nightmares. Pure Steel Paladin is a sweet card, but Cheerios is kind of a lame deck. Pure Steel Paladin plays a massive role alongside cards like Leon Shikari in my equipment themed synergizing EDH deck based around the command of the feet of the many. Rafiq as a deck focuses on generating value and smashing people's faces in with a slew of equipment. I love me some equipment. So I want to bring this toolbox approach to modern. And with that in mind I bring you my latest brainchild, Pure Steel, Pure Banter. It's designed to play as a white wing deck of sorts that generates value and wins off equipment synergies. Synergies like card draw from equipment entering the battlefield will pure still pardon in play, or synergy between an attacking 10-10 with protection from all colours and your opponent's face. We use tutors like Steel Shaper's Gift and Relic Seeker to find the appropriate equipment for the situation, playing a multitude of different effects from flare husks as cheap bodies to mortal pods as single-use pingers to ruining longbow to turn one of our guys into a turn-by-turn -turn sniper thanks to Basilisk Collar. So the card is of the deck with Aether Vile. It allows us to flash swords of fire and ice onto our unblocked creatures on Lightning Greaves in response to removal. The value engine comes in Pure Steel Paladin, who has earned his position as the Banter Claws of the deck. That's a pun of Santa Claus with the word banter sort of portmanteaued into his first name. The reason I use this term is once you start playing equipment out of your hand with the Pure Steel Paladin play, it's Pure magical fucking Christmas lad if you stuck around and you just start drawing all the cards and having all the fun. Stonehaven Outfitter, which sounds like a trendy fancy clothing outlet, allows us to jump or send creatures into the red zone which will replace themselves with cards. She's a pseudo skull club effect that synergizes extremely well with mortar pod because you always draw a card when you sack the creature off. The final core card of the deck is Mirren Crusader, who is here to fuck bitches and take names and kill your opponent with Swords of Light and Shadows equipped for huge amounts of damage thanks to his double strike. There are no Mox Opals or Battle Skulls in this particular build for budget reasons. I can't shit away all of my money playing shitty brews for your viewing pleasure. It's just not practical. I wish I could, but it's not my job. Essentially, the deck is very, very silly and it exists purely for the lols. And yes, I'll just use the word lol out loud. You see, when you're faced with a choice in life, um, or a line of play, you should always stop and ask one question. Which option that I take here will make for the best story further down the line? Or screenshot or video on the internet. Same thing. What I'm saying is, don't pass up on the opportunity to be ordained by a random stranger dressed like the Pope at 2am on the streets of Amsterdam. You'll regret it. This is what youth is for. So, turn one goblin guide off of a mountain more than likely makes our opponent eight whack, goblins or burn. I path the guide on turn two as it swings in with his smaller, more handsome friend, Legion Loyalist. I'm convinced at this point that I'm facing eight whack due to the two goblins. Slightly aroused, I deploy the core engine of the deck, Pure Steel Paladin, who probably eats a bolt. <sighs> Goodbye, my friend. We hardly knew you. Our opponent, Nufpot, brings a goblin chief into the party and luckily hits his fourth land drop. At this stage we are needing our opponent to draw suboptimally in order to ensure that we can get back into this game. Him flooding out on lands is part of this fantastic game plan that surely cannot fail. My homeboy Moon Crusader holds back the onslaught for one turn as our opponent fails to find a critical third creature to get Loyalist's attacking battalion trigger online, which means if he did swing him, Moon Crusader would just fuck one of them up and then he would down a creature. This allows me to untap, equip Battle's Collar and start the race off against my opponent by swinging in for four points of life. He swings at me, I deploy Corhaven out there who pumps my Moon Crusader, allowing me to continue the race, which he's probably not too happy about. I find a blocker and flare husk with my Steel Shaper's Gift from my hand. I miscalculate here, however, because a third creature will put me in a tough spot as Battalion and the Loyalist means my Germ Token can't block. So I'm hoping he doesn't draw a third creature. Lo and behold, a new Goblin guy joins the fray. Newfpot cracks me for seven before grenading my Mirror and Crusader to death. I play Lean and Shikari as a blocker and get my outfit a shot dead, drawing another card and not feeling too sad as it's Paladin. It's time for some more banter. <laughs> I 
either probably what you could say is the bantagonist of the deck. That was a that's a pun of the word antagonist with banter portmanteaued into it. He comes down for some top lulls, mate. Drawing me a card off my sort of lightning shadow and deciding that my team no longer needs to give a shit about equip costs. I suit up a little journal with a basilisk colour, sort of lightning shadow and a flare husk, and swing in with a hilarious result. I gain six life, put a moving potato back in my hand. What a top lad. Banter, banter, banter. My opponent can't take the mad banter and decides to go to game two. I kill a quest on my hand. Somewhere during turn one, I realise that the deck doesn't actually play enough creatures for a quest for the Holy Relic to actually be worth it. He goblin guides me, and I play a one mana do nothing and get guided again. I start to feel the lack of meaningful interaction with me, and I will die to any moderate draw from my opponent. I play what I dub the Archbishop of Banterbury himself, only to throw him under the bus to kill a power driver that would otherwise quite quickly get out of control and fuck me in half. Again, my boy, Mirren Crusader, he's back, on blocking duty again, until he eats a bolt and I get spit roasted by two goblin guides. My arsehole at this point is Red War and I'm losing lives quite quickly. My Corhaven Outfitter has, and some lovely shoes should make a blocker here, but smash to smithereens that means that my core friend trades with the guide and I'm left on two life. I deploy my second Bantasaurus Rex. That's a pun of uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, but with the word banter, portmanteaued into He is joined by a mortar board who's put on defence. My opponent's out of gas and is scared in the face of the impending top quality artifact based banter that will ensue. I cast an elephant hammer and I ping off one of his two denizens, which only goes to show that uh, hokey pokey religions and ancient goblins are no match for a good blaster by your side, kids. Like a bantelope upon the northern plains of Africa, my paladin channels the power of an elephant hammer and brings my low total back up to 7 and outside the 5p range and back into 50p range. As a side note there, just to explain, 5p is when you're really in a tense situation, so you sort of clench your arsehole and it's all tight. Normally you're like in a 50p arsehole, so your chocolate starfish looks a bit like this, but 5p is the smaller one where you'd normally look like that. Not gaping, there'd be some flesh in there so you wouldn't be pooping out of it. Anyway, let's go back to the gameplay. The game finishes with my Core Haven outfit on the stack, triggering Quest for the Holy Relic for the fifth and final time. That's top bats, mate. Top bats. So we take the deck for another spin. A solid opening hand in round three is irrelevant. Our blue-white tap lands put the fear of God into our Abzan opponent who concedes before turn three. I can only assume he heard about my new brew and he was afraid to play the pure power of pure steel, pure banter. So we take the deck for one more spin. I keep a boring hand with none of the deck's core engine in it, off the strength of a mirror and crusader. It's because I make bad decisions not only in my personal life and professional life, but also in my Magic the Gathering playing career. I play a turn one and Neurock hover sail, a piece of the deck's toolbox that gives a creature evasion on a sheep, but is meant to be tutored for when needed. It's a rather poor turn one play. Our opponent plays Blind Obedience, which immediately makes me think he is on some form of janky brew or one of those fringe enchantment prison decks. He silences me turn three, which is uh, di different and kind of janky. And as always, Gilgate into Seraph of the Sword pretty much confirms that this is some kind of odd brew. I would call it jank, but I played a turn one New York hover sale, so I would sound like a bit of a dick and a bit of a hypocrite. I finally get to cast my Mirror Crusade on turn four alongside a Sagada's Aid, which having two different swords of X and Y in my hand makes me feel like I'm about to live what the experts call the dream. In this particular circumstance, it's a wet dream full of value, huge beats, and spunky stains in the sheets. I managed to land a sort of light and shadow onto my Mirror Crusader directly without seeing a path to exile or counter spell. I then cast a pair of lightning greaves uh, in order to protect him against things like Vapor Snack and Cryptic Command bounces on my Mirror. However, while it's on the stack, I remember the mantra of take the line of play that makes the best story. I decided that if I were to put my greaves on my Mirror, I would not be able to equip Sword of Fire and Ice next turn, and the dream won't be as wet or as sexy as we first wanted it to be. I decided not to attach the greaves in order to go truly big next turn. However, a top deck negate puts an end to this dream, uh, killing off my Sword of Fire and Ice on the stack. Regardless, Moon Crusader with the sword uh, gets the job done, and we go to game two. I bring in dispels to fight counter magic and the, the random silences in my upkeep, and in Soul Artifact to put, be as aggressive as possible. Game two, we start with a hand with a tutor, a creature, an artifact, and an enabler. I feel happy enough with this, with this hand. One land less for some redundancy, like Paladin, would have been nice, but we must make do with what we can. When life gives us Moon Crusaders, we have to fuck bitches. Our aid bites the dust, which is kind of lame. Our, our relic seeker hits the board, and our opponent puts up a roadblock in the form of Spirit of the Labyrinth. Further than my original inkling, this is an enchantment prison deck of some kind. 
However, Mortapod shows us that Hokey Koki religions and Asian spirits are no match for a good blaster by your side, kids. Relic Seeker slaps into our opponent and finds Sword of Light and Shadow and gives us protection from Path, Condemn, and similar white disruption and removal. Our opponent plays Halyard, guaranteeing an enchantment thing on the other side of the board. We crack in, he plays a blocker for our non sword creature. We draw a path that we don't need because apparently an 8 5 trampling, life thinking protection from white and black creature is quite strong and enough to run away with the game. So as you can see, the deck is fun and a bit silly and probably couldn't be any top tier decks. Like, I'm pretty sure that junk guy if he'd stuck around would have kicked her ass. But on the whole, it's performed quite average today, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you enjoy the deck, then let me know. I might actually take a another spin in another video if it proves popular. Feel free to make suggestions on how we can make the deck better or even borderline competitive. Uh, Mox Ovals and Battle Skull are probably obvious additions to the deck. So thanks for watching, drop me a comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Bye bye.